I've been coding for 14 years now. Eight companies, 10 laptops, and 12 programming languages. I've been a staff engineer at Meta, I've been a full stack engineer at Pinterest, and I've been a founding engineer at a company which literally never ended up shipping a product. Here's how I'd learn to code if I could start over. The first thing I do is focus on the mindset. Wait, what you should do is read this book, Discrete Mathematics with Ducks. The most important concepts are combinatorics, graph theory, and binary. Wait, hold up, hold up. We're not trying to invent new algorithms. We're not trying to dive into theory. We're learning how to code. And you actually don't need any math to start coding, just some basic logic. So I wouldn't waste time with that. What I would do is- Wait, what you should do actually is read a programming book from start to finish. For example, Head First Kotlin. Read it while you're in bed or taking a dump. Wait, 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 hold up one more time. We're actually trying to learn how to code and reading a book about programming won't do it for you. That's like learning how to play pickleball without ever actually swinging the paddle. You learn to code with your hands on the keyboard. You learn by doing. Okay, so with all that distraction out of the way, how would I learn to code if I could start over? First, I'm going to cover the proper mindset needed for coding. Then I'll outline exactly what you should learn. And finally, I'll tell you how you can translate your coding knowledge into software engineering. The first thing to understand is that you learn programming by doing, by actually writing code, not by reading books and not by learning math. Unlike chemistry or mechanical engineering, you don't need to go into a lab and get a bunch of equipment in order to run experiments. An experiment in our world literally means that you spend two minutes typing into a computer and you get the outcome, the result of that experiment, a couple milliseconds later. Because writing code is so fast and entirely free, the best programmers will do it every day, and you should too. When you first start programming, it's going to feel hard, but that's okay. Give yourself permission to write the most horrible, buggy code imaginable. I certainly did when I was starting out. I promise you, no one will get hurt, it won't take that much time, and you're going to learn much faster. The second mindset I wish I had was to embrace discomfort. As a professional software engineer, you're going to be working in code bases which might have millions of lines of code, and they use dozens of technologies. There's no way a single human, me or you, could understand all that, but that doesn't mean you're not ready to contribute and have meaningful impact. Google is your best friend, and you should get into the habit of refining your question, going into Stack Overflow, and trying out a bunch of experiments. Finally, it's worth acknowledging that the act of creating is much, much harder than consuming. It's so hard to stare at the blank canvas on the empty screen. And so we're very tempted to just open up YouTube or check email or do something else which distracts us. Instead of relying on your willpower, focus instead on creating a healthy environment for you to get work done. For example, I and many others will get really distracted by a push notification on my phone. And so when I'm committing to focusing and I have 30 minutes of focus time, I will remove my phone out of my environment, away from arm's reach and away from my room. Now you have the right mindset. But you need to avoid the number one reason why people fail. They get stuck trying to decide which of the thousands of languages they should learn. I'll share my advice, but here's the thing. The choice you make doesn't actually matter. Once you figure out one programming language, the others become much easier, since the core concepts like conditionals, loops, and data structures will all carry over. So pick one language and commit to learning it really well. Depth is way more important than breadth when you're starting out, and I wasted so much time at the beginning of my programming journey trying to learn everything, everywhere, all at once. My recommendation is to learn the Kotlin programming language and build Android apps. And there are two reasons for this. Number one, Kotlin is a modern and well-designed language which is going to continue to increase in popularity in the coming years. Kotlin is also fully compatible with Java which has been widely used for decades now. And the best part is that Kotlin is used both on the front end for developing Android apps and widely used on the back end. And so the number of opportunities, the number of places that you can go and contribute is pretty huge when you learn Kotlin. And that leads to number two, which is that Kotlin allows you to build and publish a native Android app, which is extremely powerful. When you publish an Android app, you need to add screenshots, you need to create a release build, and you need to go through a review process. That's way more work than publishing a dinky little website, but it unlocks one very important thing, which is that it becomes much, much easier for people to evaluate your work. Once your app is live in the Play Store, the download count and the number of star ratings you receive is public. A good app shows, number one, that you've been able to hit some minimum quality bar, and number two, it'll be obvious if you've been able to create valuable software, which is the whole point of why we're learning code, to create value for other people. Having a published Android or iOS app lets you showcase your work in a way that a backend C++ project or a functional Haskell project or a website wouldn't be able to as easily. The other thing is that publishing your code gives you a magical chance to get lucky. And this actually happened to me. I accidentally made an app which blew up in Brazil, got 100,000 downloads, but that's a story for another day.
The other hack here is to build the same app multiple times. The first time you follow a tutorial or you build a project, there are going to be a lot of parts that you don't understand, and that's okay. For example, you may not understand the impact of a line of code, or you may not understand how the data got from one place to another. So if you're learning by following someone along, then once the initial version of the app is done, build the same app again, but this time, do it with less hand-holding from the tutorial. Do this literally three or four more times and rely less and less on the tutorial and extend the project a bit more and more each time. You'll feel so much more confident and you'll have a much deeper understanding of how things actually work. Once again, it doesn't matter what you learn, but I do recommend that you commit to one thing and learn it really well by building something. If you don't have anything in mind, then I actually have a 20 part tutorial available here on YouTube where we start from an empty project and go all the way to a published Android app in the Google Play Store. I'll leave a link for that in the description if you're interested. Finally, for most people learning how to code, the eventual goal is to become a software engineer. So I have some tips about that. A coder simply writes code, but a software engineer writes code to have impact on people's lives. Lucky for you, these are the exact skills that I focus on in the company I'm building called Taro. We have live events, master classes, and a discussion forum with some of the best engineers focused on career growth. Check it out at jointaro.com. Second, anything meaningful. Right, I have one more thing to add. When you're starting to code, you should do one leak code problem every single day. You know what they say, a leak code a day keeps the unemployment away. Wait, hold on, hold on. This guy is wrong again. Please don't waste time worrying about the algorithm questions that are often asked in tech company interviews. The skill of passing a tech interview is actually very different from the skill of being a good software engineer. I recommend that you don't waste any time with leak code when you're starting out. What you will spend a lot of time on as a professional software engineer is working with the team. When you're on a team, in order to manage the complexity of multiple people contributing to a shared code base, you should learn the fundamentals of a version control system like Git. You don't need to go that deep here. There are five or six core commands that you're gonna use all the time, the 80-20 rule. Things like adding, committing, and pushing to a repository in Git. So learn those, and then there's a long tail of other commands that you'll learn as you go deeper and as you continue working with the team. Finally, as soon as you're ready, and maybe even before you feel ready, start teaching other people. When you encounter a new concept, explain it to other people on your team, explain it to your dog, even explain it to your rubber duck. It all really helps you learn more. This is actually backed up by the science. We retain 10% of what we read, 20% of what we watch, and 90% of what we teach. So making a YouTube video or writing a blog post about what you've learned turns out to be extremely valuable, if for no one else but you. Sometimes we think we understand something, but we get so much more clarity when we get it out of our heads and teach someone, either verbally or written down. Clear communication is what distinguishes the best software engineers from mediocre ones. The world of coding is constantly changing, has a bunch of deep technical problems, and it has a huge impact on the world. It won't always be easy, but I promise learning to code is one of the most fulfilling activities you can do. Let me know in the comments where you are on your coding journey, or if you have any tips to share with other people learning to code. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.